Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories, which is sort of related to r slash weeaboo tales, but, but not really, they're, they're two different things. We've also got nice guys, which we'll probably cover at some point, because I really love the, the internal cringe. And a lot of these stories also get more involved than just like <laughs> a passing brush with an entitled parent, so that's always nice. You'll see what I mean. Anyways, <laughs> let's jump right into our first story. Dated a neckbeard for three years. Here's one of my many stories. So I'll just jump right into this with some background. At the time of this story, I was working in a town half an hour away from home, and I was working from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. So the only days I had off were Saturday and Sunday, but normally Saturdays were used for food shopping, gardening, and house cleaning, so the only day I really had free was Sunday. So cast, me, that's OP, TB is Twigbeard, that's OP's neckbeard X, and Mum is Wonderful Mother. So Twigbeard and I had planned to meet in the city on the weekend to spend some extra time together, since we knew we hadn't had a chance to in literal months due to me working and him having exams. So he knew that I only had Sunday free due to what I previously explained above, and originally said that was fine. Anyway, Friday night rolls around. And I ask what time he'll be in the city, as it's a two-hour trip for me, so I need to plan ahead. Before continuing, I'd like to point out that the city was only 30 minutes for him by public transport, since he didn't have a license, despite being nearly 20. OP via text, Hey, what time should we meet Sunday? I know shops don't open till like 10.30, so maybe we should meet up around 11 and get lunch before shopping. Twigbeard, Yeah, I don't know if I can be bothered Sunday. It's too hard to catch the train and bus since the timetables are changed. OP, but can't you just use the transportation app to look at the times? Twigbeard, yeah, but it's still too much work. Why can't you change your Saturday stuff to Sunday, and then you can shop at... Shop that's ten minutes from his parents' house. Then we can come home and play some video games. OP, because I go shopping with my mom and help her garden and clean. You know she can't do that stuff by herself with her condition. My mom has an autoimmune disease that can cause her a lot of pain from doing too much physical work. She's doing a lot better now, though, with new medication. Twigbeard. Well, I can't be bothered coming in Sunday. Why don't you drive down to me? Then you can watch me beat this boss on... Some game I can't remember. And then we could get Marcus or something. OP. Because instead of driving an hour and catching a train... It'd be driving two hours both ways, and I need to save fuel for work. Twigbeard? Well, then I guess we're not meeting up then. OP? Yeah, okay, it's your choice. I was pretty upset after this and basically ignored him for the rest of the day. He didn't really care though, as he would ignore me for a good few hours when he was gaming, which was basically any time his mother didn't force him out of the house. He also ignored me when I came down to visit him and would get aggressive with me if I distracted him and he died in a game. Jesus Christ. This was terrifying because despite him being a twig, he was still bigger than my 160 centimeter petite self. My mom saw this and we went out for some morning tea the next morning before shopping which I really enjoyed. I did end up breaking up with him a few weeks later because he didn't seem to want any kind of relationship anymore, just someone to have sex with. Edit! Here's the other post about this man to show how neckbeardy he is and give a little more context. Oh yeah, we gotta continue this saga, for sure. <laughs> Let's jump straight into it. I ended up dating a neckbeard. So glad it's over. So this would be too long if I don't cut out some of the shit that happened in the three years that we dated. That being said, I'll keep the major stuff in the story. Trigger warning, sexual assault and abuse, as with most of these neckbeard and nice guy stories. So background, we started dating when I was 17 and he was 16. We met in an overseas trip and fell in love during that month. He was really into anime, video games, he had a fedora, and he even bought himself a s <laughs> He even bought himself a sword when we went to a convention. He was as thin as a twig and really didn't take care of himself. Oh, and he also had no motivation to do anything. Before we dated, he bragged about how he did soccer, but I never witnessed him going to any kind of training. He also had a part-time job while we were both in uni, and he would call in sick every other week to play video games, even after I voiced that he should go to work if he can. Anyways, we started dating during the last two years of high school and our first year of university. 
Here's the most neck beardy things that he did in those years. One, we lived two hours apart, but he refused to get his license since he lived in the city so he could take public transport. Issue being that I lived on a farm, so there was no public transportation out to me. Not even a bus, so if he wanted to visit me, I would still have to go pick him up. So a four hour trip so he could come to my house. Sometimes I would get sick of that, so I would ask him to meet up in the city, which is only a half hour from his place, but an hour and a half from mine. The only day I could meet up was normally Sundays, since I had school and work. Yeah, well, that was too much work for him, since he would have to wait 20 minutes for the train, so it became an hour trip for him, instead of a half hour. So he would say, Sorry, it's too hard to meet up today. I'm just gonna stay home and game. <laughs> what a loser. Two. He got really pissed off when I missed a date. One, I remember really well because I cried for a long ass time after this. I had caught a really bad cold, not the flu, and I could barely f breathe, let alone drive down to see him. I asked my mom to text him that I can't meet up since I'm dying, she does, and then heads to work. Over the next few hours he texts me that I've ruined his day and that I'm so lazy, blah blah blah, not great. Three, he forced slash coerced me into sex and took my virginity despite me expressing that I wasn't really comfortable with sex due to past trauma. He didn't care, and also didn't care if he hurt me during the act. Eventually I got sick of this, so I tried not to be alone with him, and I never initiated sex. 4. He used my sexuality as a chance to look at other girls and talk about how sexy they are. I came out to him first as bisexual, and the moment I did, he tried to watch lesbian porn with me, or talk about how sexy some of his friends slash college mates were, Mind you, if I even looked at a guy for longer than three seconds, he would yell at me that I didn't love him. Eventually, I came out as a demisexual, and he called me out saying that's not a real thing, blah blah blah. This would eventually be the straw that broke the camel's back. Five. Lastly for this story, he would point out all my flaws and shit that I was working on. For example, my large thighs, my acne, my little tummy pudge. That really hurt me since I'd been training in martial arts for two years before we got together and I've been trying for two years to treat my acne, but I used these comments as motivation to work harder. He, on the other hand, couldn't take any criticism without saying, I didn't love him, and I dump him for it. He also only ate junk food and never exercised unless I forced him to. Six, he was absolutely obsessed with anime and had some many lewd anime games he tried to get me to play or watch lewd anime. He also talked about how he jerked to him as well. Seven, he had a trench coat and wanted to get a fedora, although he never worked enough, he always called off work for stupid reasons, to buy the fedora he wanted. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> Eventually, I realized he was a douchebag and left him. Tried to stay friends with him, but one comment when I was in a fragile place caused me to lose any respect I had left for him, and I've completely cut him out of my life. I'm now much happier with an amazing man who I'd never imagined I could end up with. What was the comment, OP? WHAT WAS THE COMMENT?! <laughs> now I'm gonna be wondering about that all day. I think LP absolutely nailed it when she's like, well, he doesn't really want a relationship, he just wants somebody to have sex with, which... is kind of pathetic, isn't it? Like, she's willing to drive an hour and a half, and you can't go an hour on public transport. What a lazy turd. Just an awful human being with so many insecurities that... Yeah, like you pointed out, he's not even trying to work on. <laughs> he's like, you're just gonna leave me. Yeah, she she should. She did, eventually. Thank God. Good job on OP for standing up and taking control of her life. She seems like such a sweet girl, you know? Helping the mom out with cleaning and shopping and all this stuff. And to just get taken advantage of by ugh, just some scummy neckbeard. Ugh! This story makes me cringe so hard. It also makes me angry, but she's out of the situation now, so I guess it's safe to just cringe. So, in summary, f*** you, Twigbeard. I hope you get hit by a bus, but the chances are low because you never seem to leave the house. So good, stay in the house. <laughs> Don't expose society to your neckbeardy nastiness. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> a nice series of stories. Let's move on to the next one. I dated a neckbeard slash nice guy hybrid for over a year. Hear ye, hear ye, my tale of woe. And this is actually from r slash just neckbeard things, but it was cross-posted the neckbeard story, so it counts. It totally counts. Anyways, when I was in high school, I went through what was the worst breakup of my life. 
It devastated me, nearly ruined my GPA, and left me feeling like I'd never find love again. Gotta love those teenage emotions. <laughs> High school is a serious place. These problems matter. <laughs> Suffice to say, I was in a vulnerable position, and that position led me into the clutches of the most neckbeardy, nice guy weeb that I have ever met to this day. For the purposes of this story, let's call him W. W was a friend that I had met sophomore year and who I went to church with. We weren't super close until after my breakup when we started to flirt casually. W was a self-professed nice guy. He fancied himself the underdog of the world, and he and his nice guy slash nerd boyfriends were the moral backbone of society. He and the other nerds of this world were truly the oppressed population. <laughs> Over the years, I've recognized that he truly did feel morally superior to everyone else, but at the time, I thought he was just a good dude who really took to heart the issues of the world. I was in the depths of despair and itching for something to help, and W was perfect. Nice, sweet, so I thought. Kinda cute. Yes, he was in the anime club, and yes, he did in fact have a strange obsession with Nintendo, but it was fine. I should have known, however, that things would get weird, when he started to poke me in the stomach during one of our classes, again, dumb high school sh**. I would squeak in shock, he poked hard, and he would mutter, That noise make me a monster. What the f What the f <laughs> At the time, I thought it was a little weird, but whatever, maybe he's just a little into weird anime. I wasn't deterred by his anime club friend group. They were all nice people, though they were to a T the textbook anime club. I wasn't deterred by the Naruto run that he would do around our high school campus. I wasn't deterred by the fact that prior to dating me, he had been interested in dating an 8th grader. We were 16. I wasn't even perturbed by the literal neckbeard that he was growing. I really, really should have known that something was off though on our first official date. We went to see Ex Machina, which I thought was an incredible film. If you haven't seen it, without spoiling it, the movie ends with the unlucky main character in a bit of a dire situation due to the actions of a female character. W did not like this, and let me know by sobbing on our way home from the movie because, and I quote, Nice guys always finish last. If you've seen the movie, you know what an absolutely f***ed up take that is. I comforted him though, feeling like I was a bit in over my head, but I let it go. Dear reader, I should not have let it go. <laughs> From that point on, we fell into a pattern where W would cry at the end of every single <laughs> date. <laughs> no goodbye kisses for me, or whispered sweet nothings, no. W would sit in the car and cry about everything. How his friends at elementary school left him, how his current friends weren't loyal enough, how I was going away to college and leaving him. It was a mess, but I was in too deep. He professed his love very early on. And I felt, as many young girls do, that he needed me. Ugh. It only got worse as I left for college at the end of that summer. I made a group of friends at college, and without fail, W would call me at every friend gathering and keep me on the phone for at least an hour while he cried about not having his own friend group. Spoiler, he did in fact have his own friend group. I would be stuck on the phone comforting him instead of making memories my freshman year of college. As he got more comfortable around me in the relationship, I also begin to notice some very disturbing things about him. PSA, this is fucking nasty. W left an odor around him, especially in areas where he had been sitting for a while. It smelled, and I am not exaggerating, like straight <laughs> Like he had just pooped right there. <laughs> this was a mystery to me for a while. Was he not wiping? Did he just have an unfortunate body odor? What was going on? Well, my friends, what it turned out to be was that W did not shower until he absolutely had to. And on top of that, he suffered some intense bowel issues due to the fact that he ate entire bags of candy for meals frequently. During our relationship, there would be times where I literally had to beg him to shower after sometimes more than a week or two of him avoiding it. I'm a borderline obsessively clean person. This disgusted me, and I still didn't dump him. This theme was present all throughout his life, too, as he once confessed to avoiding brushing his teeth for a year. Ugh. What? Yes, his teeth looked the way you would imagine after something like that. 
God, I just... <laughs> we continued on this way for over a year. I withstood trials and tribulations. He frequently made references to his waifu. Joking? I thought so at the time, but nope. He divulged his weird fantasies to me. I'm still grossed out by them. I won't go into detail, but they involve some extreme manipulation of the female form into what would result in death outside of weird hentai. Less fun, he would sexually manipulate me often, begging and pleading for things that I didn't want to do. Yikes. But how could I dump him? He was so nice. He bound me with the chains of a life imagined for us. He told me that we would get married. He picked out names for our kids. When I confessed I didn't really love one of the names he'd picked out anymore, it had been a while since we discussed it, he got upset enough to... Yes, of course, cry. Towards the end of our relationship, he also started to feel guilt about the sexual things we had done, and told me he was going to our church leadership about it. People I had to go to church with and talk to every week. People who I wanted to respect me. I had no say in the discussion. It made me feel extreme anxiety about being in church. After starting my sophomore year, I'd finally had enough of his shit. I was getting to a point where I would feel physically repulsed when looking at him. I felt really lost. My friends started to understand how bad things really were. I felt like I couldn't talk to my parents because they loved him, and I was scared to dump him because we went to church together. When I finally broke it off for good, which didn't happen until friends stepped in, he would call and leave me sobbing voice messages, and if I answered, he would repeat, I love you, I love you, trying to force me to say it back. When he finally seemed to realize that it was over for good, he threatened to go to my parents and tell them that I was sleeping around and had dumped him in order to go off the deep end. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He also told similar stories to one of my best friends from home, trying to tell her to rein me in. None of these things were happening. I didn't have my first drink until after I was 21, and I didn't attend a party or sleep with anyone my whole college career. He also shifted his entire personality after we broke up. I think in an attempt to become more attractive to me after the fact, he picked up skills and hobbies and fashion tastes that I had mentioned I liked in passing. He wore combat boots. He picked up photography. He tried to learn guitar. I would have encouraged his personal growth, if it all hadn't been things that I had explicitly mentioned that I liked during our relationship. Growing yourself is good. But this felt creepy. Additionally, I was kind of shunned in my church because of how much of a nice guy everyone thought he was. How could you dump him? He's so nice. I felt like a pariah. I wanted to scream, if he's so nice, why don't you date him? This got better over time, but it still makes me upset. To this day, family members will tell me, I feel so bad for W about what happened. He was so nice. It's been five fucking years. Yes, W was nice, but he also really hurt me. And that's mostly where our tale ends. Outside of seeing him at church once in a while, all communication dropped off. He quickly began dating other girls. How do guys like this find women? And to this day, he's in a stable relationship with a girl who seems normal. I really, really hope that he's grown from the person that he was, but sometimes I do just kind of want to send her a message and ask if she's okay. I won't, ever, don't worry. I just feel a strange kinship to her. If I had one bit of advice for any girls or women out there who might be in similar situations, you don't have to stay. Even if you think they need you. Even if you've told them that you'll get married. Even if you are married. If someone makes you feel gross when you're around them, End it. Your happiness is worth more than that. I give you a pro tip for anybody who's considering dating anybody else out there. You can't fix them. You can never fix somebody else. <laughs> That's just how it is. If you see something that you don't like, if you decide that you can't live with it, you better get out of there because they're not going to change. You can't fix somebody else. It's just that simple. The new Rudo run? Okay, I guess I could probably live with it. <laughs> Maybe. Not brushing your teeth for a year? At that point, I gotta get out of there. Sexual fantasy resulting in your, your partner's death? Uh... <laughs> I've never run so fast. That is... that is insanity. And then the weirdest part of all is everybody seems to think that he's a nice guy. Probably because he uses this crocodile tears kind of crying to manipulate people around him and get what he wants. It's, it's just ridiculous. 
it's a good lesson in the fact that you don't really know who people are. Once you get close to them, spend a bunch of time with them, then you really get to know who they are. And a lot of times, the vast majority of times, I would say almost every single time, you're not going to like absolutely everything that you find. Like, I get a lot of comments and people are like, Oh, Reddix, you sound like such a cool dude, I'd like to hang out with you. I mean, I, I am pretty fun, I know how to have a good time, but there are also days when I'm so depressed I can't even get out of bed, so... <laughs> it's a mixed bag, isn't it? Of course, I don't make YouTube videos about that or anything, because we're all here to have a good time, aren't we? You don't want to hear me cry into a microphone <laughs> for 30 minutes. Let's just have some laughs, and if I feel like a sad boy, I can come back to the comments and be like, Hey, these people think I matter. <laughs> and that's always a nice feeling. But I know a lot of people don't have that outlet. They do have to depend on, you know, personal relationships, people around them to, to give them their validation. And this guy, oh my god. I don't even know where to start, honestly. Super insecure, no sense of self-worth, just... Ugh, what a mess. What an absolute mess. And the truth is, the only person that can change him is him. So I too hope that he's grown from this relationship, and the current girl that he's with isn't, uh... Whatever, subjected to inflation porn or whatever the hell he's into. <laughs> and if she is, if she is subjected to that, I, I hope she enjoys it. I hope she wasn't manipulated into it. Oh God, what a mixed bag. I'm not even sure what else to say about this. Jesus, these neckbeard stories, though. All right. I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. Check out the links in the description. Twitter, Discord, Patreon, also my other channel. If you're into, like, gaming and bundles and stuff like that. I'd also like to give a big shout-out to my patrons for helping me live the dream. We got Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Damon Darkstar, Lady Nix, Radimus Sisko, Mr. Weasel, and the most stalwart, the oldest of all, Nico the Legend. <laughs> I hope you guys would consider signing up for that. I'm also considering putting some t-shirts or, like, merch on there, which might be cool, but... The channel's still kind of small. Both of my channels are still kind of small. But we're growing. It's nice. I appreciate you guys helping me out with that. And listening along with me here today. Join me again tomorrow. Probably some r slash entitled parents. But I can't be too sure. I'm, I'm feeling some choosing beggars coming on too. Ooh. In my bones. <laughs> so. I guess it'll be a nice surprise. But I'll see you then friends. Remember to keep yourself safe out there and wash your hands, and until the next time, bye-bye.